Ladies and gentlemen, here's my mommy and daddy from F and Flip. The way you walk right in with that noble chin and struck that classic pose. It was deja vu, I strangely thought I knew that nose, who knows? Those lips, those eyes, that hair so short, those teeth that scar, those moles that wart, a funny feeling I can't ignore, haven't I seen you before? The way you hold your teeth and say, pardon me, rings a distant bell. The way you wear your clothes, the way you pick a rose, the way you smell, oh well. In another life, you were smooth as silk. It's reincarnation, evaporated ill. Maybe we were comrades in an ancient war. Haven't I seen you before? Haven't I seen you? Haven't I dreamed you? Haven't I dreamed you before? Who'd ever know, maybe ages ago, you were Zeus. I came to your rescue, you were my brother, or maybe my nephew, or maybe you were me in days of yore, cause haven't I seen you before, haven't I dreamed you before, you look familiar, haven't I been you before. of life after death, or more specifically, reincarnation, has always prompted a great deal of interest and skepticism from the public. My guest today claims to have lived many lives in the past. Let's welcome Mr. Ivan X. Skuse. Thank you, Maureen. I want you to look right into that camera, Mr. Skuse, and tell our viewers how many incarnations you've had. Well, I, uh, I had a couple with lunch, but that was it. Uh, no liqueurs or anything. Uh, no, no, Ivan. I mean, how many lives you've had? Oh! Uh, 7,000. 7,000 right on? Right on, baby. <laughs> right on, baby is right. You've been born 7,000 times. Yeah. You want to try it sometime. Talk about headaches. <laughs> and I guess you've died 7,000 times. Not yet. How's the show going? <laughs> right. <laughs> Can you tell us about any of your previous lives? Were, were you ever anyone famous? Well, <clears throat> not at first. Uh, I just took whatever came along, you know, when I was just getting started. Uh, the amoeba thing, you know, and uh, the woolly mammoth. <laughs> and uh, I was a pterodactyl. Yeah, that was a bit of a trip. Um, but, you know, it was pretty well whatever they needed back in those days. And then I got a break. I was the last dodo bird. That would be too much to hope for. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, an agent spotted me, liked my work. Uh, I got some eight by ten glossies of my aura. Oh, yeah. And I started getting some half-decent gigs. Mm -hmm. You know, I was uh, Galileo, I was Alexander the Great, Lazarus, and, uh, and the money started getting a little better, too. The money? You, you get paid for being reincarnated? Well, it's a living. <laughs> That's a dead one. <laughs> <clears throat> Then, of course, I was uh, General you. Custer, I was Lincoln, I was uh, Marco Polo, yeah, yeah. And have any of these previous lives had any effect on you? Well, I couldn't say that, really. No? I guess uh, mm -hmm. after the Custer thing, I'm a little nervous driving through Brantford. <laughs> Is uh, there anyone that you wish you could have been? You know, it's funny, I always wanted to be Moses, uh -huh. but they gave it to Chuck Heston. <laughs> but then they wouldn't let him be anybody else. Oh, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess uh, someday the, he might get to be God, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but he'll never be anybody important, like no. Reagan, you know. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Skews, uh, yes. very briefly, could you tell us whether you consider it a blessing or a curse to be continually moving from one life to another? How briefly? <laughs> very briefly? Yes. <laughs> I've just been kicked, meaning there's 30 seconds left. So I would say it is definitely a blessing. Really? It is a blessing. Uh-huh. It's a damned blessing, in fact, which is a cursed blessing. Because whenever I get bored or turned off, 
I can just turn off. I can die. You know. I see. It's, it's that simple. Well, ladies, this has been a fascinating and therefore most unusual interview for us, and I'm not going to let Mr. Skuse go. As a matter of fact, I'm going to interview him again tomorrow and find out more about this bizarre and fascinating subject. I'm sure Ivan will appreciate that and enjoy himself just as much as he has today. <laughs> Don't worry, he'll be back. <laughs> Before. Were you my wife in another life? And why'd you come back for more? <laughs> You'd be shocked if the truth were told. People aren't new, they're just resold. You find yourself saying more and more. Haven't I seen you before? I know you. <laughs> Thank you, and please welcome Avril Chown. Jason held the candle that lit my way to shore And I always seem to be asking him for more and more and more He's luminous in the candle glow and he's looking Mercy is not strained, it droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven. 
But of late, there is a strain on quality that shows no mercy as production standards droppeth below the minimum wage. <laughs> Department stores display such outrageous goods. What are the whys for their wares that cause a rank upheaval in my bowels odds? Bodkins, what a load of crap. <laughs> I go in search of truth and excellence. I find miracle slicers and vegematics. I go in search of iron and steel. I find white metal and space-age plastic. What happened to pride of workmanship? Are there no craftsmen in Taiwan? Should we take this whole mess along with the salesmen, many of whom are pocket fishermen, and stuff them all into a patty stacker? Or are we not to blame? Doth not the great bird of guilt circle overhead and then finally drop his inevitable message on the front of our codpiece? And this message says that we are unwilling to pay for a job well done. I beseech you to let this not be the case. Treat every purchase as you would a visit to a house of ill repute. If you can't afford the best, become a monk. And in the monastery you will learn that you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. But pigs can still be fun. And you will also learn that a life of service to others stinks. Or as we say in blank verse, the strain of mercy is not quality. Like uplifting? Uplifting. Uplifting. A little more class than your normal. <laughs> a, little more, a little more class than me. Than my outfit, maybe. <laughs> you know, since we became parents, a lot of things have to change, and, and uh, especially diapers. And uh, one thing that we have in common, Steve, the husband and I, is... We have something? Yeah. Oh. And we're really very squeamish, you know, and, and uh, we just live in terror that a squeamish child... Squeamish is a great word. A squeamish. A child like of you ours... see something yucky, you just squeam. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm a queen>. <laughs> <laughs> we live in constant fear that someone's going to hurt themselves and you know we'll be the only ones there to patch them up or whatever right. and one time at Thanksgiving when on when our little boy was about what seven months old something like he was walking so he's older than that oh I guess he was 18 months 18 <laughs> we'll go with 18 months and who's gonna lie he was pretty old anyway uh, and I was, was 23 is what he was. <laughs> and I was pregnant with the second one Max fell down well, let's make it more than seven months then shall we <laughs> <laughs> and cut his eye on his grandmother's television set. Doesn't everybody? So since it was Thanksgiving, we had to phone the medical center and make these preparations to take him over there to have the eye fixed. Mm -hmm. So you can see the both of us, you know, just we just we can't handle this we situation. Were squeaming. We, we were, were sque both squeaming. <laughs> we were squeaming our widow Boynes out. It's terrible. <laughs> so we got to the doctor's office and he said, well... well wait a minute. I, I hate to interrupt here, Ava. Are you Somebody sure was you wearing do? cigarettes on their dresses. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, see, when you have cigarettes, you're always panting. Anyway, uh, I ha had Maxie and I said to Morgan, don't worry, I'm going to take care of this. I had the cold, the ice cube and the cloth and I was stopping the... He didn't table. say yet that the doctor said he had to have stitches in it. You see, you no, never no, it's tell before a story that. properly. It's on the way down. Oh. While we were driving down, you see, I said, oh. I said he's probably going to have to have stitches, but I know how squeamish you are. You know. Squeam, squeam. Yeah, that's what she said. She's always quick. And uh, I said, I'll look after it. I'll hold Maxine. Whatever has to be done, has to be done. You drive, I'll look after it. I'm macho. Back to you, Orv. So we get to the doctor's office, and he says he has to have stitches. Mm -hmm. okay. He said a couple of stitches. A couple of stitches, Which a couple in Canadian is two, two. all right? Mm -hmm. A couple is two. So, all right. So he put the poor little soul down on the table, and he started to get ready. And so, so Steve was holding Maxie down so that he wouldn't move, and the doctor I had to hold his head still. Yes, and I'm holding the feet. Your own son. Feet. Now, the doctor put the stitches. Two isn't enough. You know what happened? Max was fine. His father fainted on the floor. Two. Well, he said a couple. I was set. I had myself set. I had my squeam level set for two stitches. <laughs> but three stitches was too much. I'm sorry. So I had a fainted problem. Well, excuse me. I'm going to sing a song now. Okay. Well, uh, go out there and don't be squeamish. Okay. There's more. I'd sing in jail. How's wrong?
Tony Molesworth. Thank you. I'd just like to feel up my audience. Uh, anybody here by any chance into uh, punk music? Any punkers? Yeah. Uh, a couple. You can always tell punkers in the audience when they applaud. Yeah, right. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder if the punk thing keeps going. People into punk rock now grow up, go into respectable professions. Ten years from now, we'll have punk lawyers, punk doctors. <laughs> just picture a punk doctor. Yeah. Take this pill. See if you can call me in the morning. <laughs> Gets totally carried away. Anyway, I'm in a good mood. I just bought a new car a little while ago. Honda Civic. Anybody own a Civic? Yeah? Ah, you couldn't afford a real car either, right? <laughs> Civics are great. Uh, there's advantages and disadvantages to those cars. Uh, advantage, you could do a U-turn in the same lane. <laughs> One thing I don't like when I'm driving my car is anybody smoking inside the car. Not because I don't like smoking, but if somebody's smoking in a Civic and they inhale too hard, the roof comes down. <laughs> That's other advantages, disadvantages, uh, well, trying to cross the white line on the highway. No, I can do it. <laughs> <It'd just> be... <laughs> you have to go between the dashes. <laughs> Engine ever goes dead? You can jump start it with a pocket calculator. <laughs> right. Great cars. Just after I bought my car, I went down south, drove down, long distance. Civics are very comfortable for long distance driving. <laughs> you can even put your arm up on the opposite window. <laughs> Driving along. I went down to Kentucky actually, drove down in my car, pulled up to red light. You know those macho cars, opposite of Civics, whole cars on a 45 degree angle. <laughs> Guy who was driving the car looked just like the car. His forehead was on a 45 degree angle. Real macho, tough character, had a case of beer rolled up in his t-shirt. <laughs> Couldn't resist. I'm in my little tiny car. He's in this big car. So I took my Civic, stuck it into neutral, stepped on the accelerator. <clears throat> Okay, exaggeration. <laughs> Light turns green, we're off. Of course, he wins. He disappears off into the distance. I'm just driving along, and I got pulled over by a Kentucky cop. Guy gets out of his car, comes up to my car, real tough, puts his foot up on my roof. <laughs> Ends up giving me a ticket. I managed to get out of it, actually. I told him we didn't have speed limits in Canada. <laughs> I managed to get out of the ticket because he bought it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Good night. What a drag to be a garbage bag We're fat and green and stink We overeat and roll in the street We've all had too much to drink We're fit to be tied, we're totally zipped Haven't you noticed we're always ripped? That's why we're taken away Don't blame us, we make no fuss Fold it up in a drawer It's horrible when you pack us full Of stuff you don't want no more What a disgrace, we feel so punk Packed to the eyes with all your junk That's why we're taken away Oh, Mr. Garbage Man We don't want to go Our lumps. But 
we're not gonna spend a lifetime down in the dumps. <laughs> Latch on to the good things we can do. Souls need not be lost. We'll hold your clothes, and when the cold wind blows, we can save your plants from frost. Show some mercy, we're getting frail. It's just not fun to be a diaper pail. Don't let them take us away. Oh, Mr. Garbage Man, we don't want to go. Just take a garbage can and leave us alone. you think sounds believable and remember we're non biodegradable he's leaving ah! see you next week <laughs> oh boy <laughs> thank you and help us thank our guests avril chown and tony molesworth